Alissa Martinova se tourne vers la photographie après des études en philologie étrangère. Elle est originaire d'Orenbourg en Russie, mais elle vit et travaille à Florence en Italie. A l'aide de l'intelligence artificielle, son projet Alien Life Form lui permet d'explorer les thèmes universels des humains, du changement, de la création ainsi que de l'espace-temps. Alissa, comment vous êtes emparée de cette question, de cette expression proposée par la ville à Pérochon 30 ans après Well, it was a very interesting topic to speak about and I was really interested in this uh, theme from the beginning because uh, the project I'm exhibiting here, I started it in uh, 2020, so during the pandemic when technology was coming up. Uh, into our lives in a very particular way and it had a very important role in our lives and uh, at this point I was starting thinking Uh, what is it about technology, how it will develop, how it will evolve, how we are going to evolve in connection to technology. And uh, in fact, uh, the topic of my work is this connection and the uh, intricate metamorphosis of uh, technology and humans, because um, in fact, Uh, it uh, touches on different questions, on uh, questions that we hear in myths and legends, for example, and uh, and also in our in our nowadays life, and be because uh, when a person creates something, when a human being creates something, it's uh, a lot of time perceived as something um, detached from themselves. So it's like an object they are developing and then it uh, stays there and it lives their own life. And uh, that's something that happened with technology, with computer technology and uh, the artificial intelligence, for example. Uh, but um, already in 2020, technology was coming in the first place. And um, in the recent years, uh, last year when the uh, big artificial intelligence models were launched in, uh, in the uh, like ordinary use of human beings, it somehow uh, provoked a very interesting answer that was quite dramatic, I would say, because it uh, raised a lot of uh, excitement, but also a lot of fears uh, about how life will evolve now, because the technology is such a fast-paced uh, industry, such a fast-paced world. So I think that uh, asking a question, um, what will happen 30 years later, is a very big question, hard to answer. And what I was trying to um, uh, tackle in my project is to uh, represent a starting point of that. So somehow uh, put uh, th um, through the research, okay, uh, so in my work I'll do a lot of research, so on the topic I talk to professionals and um, through that work I was trying to put a starting point, like where we are now and that w how it can evolve later, but also leaving the spectator the possibility to imagine how, how it will be. So I'm, uh, what I'm trying to do is uh, that I'm showing where we are now and then giving a hint of how it will come better. Et concrètement, euh, pratiquement, <laughs> comment toutes ces idées euh, sont-elles euh, mises en œuvre Uh, since I've done a lot of research, I started, um, I started researching on uh, how technology was tackled before. So not, uh, not only in the recent centuries, but in the recent years, but also before. And I found a very interesting uh, article, a very interesting um, uh, group of researchers that were um, the representatives of um, the cyborg feminist movement. Uh, in the 60s, and uh, for example, Anne Haraway, so I read a lot about her, and uh, already in the 60s she was saying a very important phrase about technology and humans, so she was saying that we are all cyborgs. And uh, so cyborg is usually some, somebody or something or an entity that has implemented their life 
through technology. And it's not, uh, and in, in bigger terms, it's not, it's not necessary to directly implement the metal or technological parts in our bodies, but just holding it in our hands is enough. So like phones, the TV, internet, everything, it, it has implemented our, uh, our abilities. So we are actually, all of us can be considered cyborgs in a certain way. And um, this is a very interesting notion and this is something that I was trying to manifest in my work. And um, so this was one of par part of the work. So the, p the notion of a person becoming a cyborg or actually being a cyborg. So uh, we, we are, uh, and, um, and on the other hand, there was this notion of technology, yeah, the common um, understanding of technology as an alien life form means something that lives their own lives, has their own uh, rules, and their own ways, but something that we don't actually understand a lot. And that's something that was manifested a lot during the last year when these big uh, artificial intelligence models came out. Uh, it, it was over. It was. Pfft. It was overwhelming for the people, for the human, uh, to understand because, of course, it's something bigger than us. It's something that learns faster than us, has more abilities than us. But then, again, it's a machine. But So the whole project is playing on these two uh, standpoints. One of a person becoming very much closer to technology and being shaped by technology. And technology coming from a person, coming from the nature, because again, it, it all comes from nature, it all comes from a, uh, from a human mind, and living a life of their own. And in all that, these two entities come together and they form a new world. That's what is going to become. This metamorphosis of those two entities co-creating each other. Because again, uh, as I said in the beginning, um, the, um, sort of if we are thinking about the creation myth, right? There is a creator who created something and then, but it was detached. So there was no influence of the creation on the creator. And this is something that is impossible in terms, in philosophical terms, in uh, nature terms. So, uh, and I think this is something very important to think about and uh, to, um, to remember and to acknowledge and to be aware of technology being not something distant and something outside of us, but something that is being co-created with us and we are being co-created by technology in certain terms. Alissa, est-ce que ce projet mené euh, pour la Villa Perrochon vous donne des idées pour des explorations futures Est-ce que ça fait évoluer votre travail uh, I definitely think so, <laughs> because uh, the interesting thing about this project is that I actually came in contact with these artificial intelligences. So I was uh, exploring the chat GPT, GPT uh, AI, I was exploring um, the image creating AI. And every time when I start a new project, like here, for example, uh, I told you that I started it in 2020, but it was very a uh, small part of it, so I only elaborated the concept of it. And the actual body of work came out during my residency at Villa Perrochon. And uh, every time I start a new project, it's really hard to finish because uh, the more I research, the more I work with the project, the more I come in contact with the topic, the more I um, experiment, the more ideas come to my mind. And I strongly believe that this exhibition will be only a starting point for this project. Uh, also because uh, thinking about this project, again, about this um, uh, entity of technology and humans. It's something that touches on the essential questions of our world, something like space, time, uh, the existential questions. So it really becomes something bigger than uh, we would see on, on the, in the picture, something bigger than I imagined in the beginning. And the more I go into it, the more it I see it touching on these essential questions uh, which I'm always interested in and uh, that I think will be quite difficult to tackle but uh, I think I would like to go on with that. Merci beaucoup, Alissa. Thank you. <laughs> Is that it? <laughs>
Okay. All right. <laughs>